Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hi. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Austin. Welcome to Phil Austin. I'm Ali. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at the Filecoin Foundation. Um, and yes, the accent's Australian, so uh, and it really feels like Australian summer here as well in Austin. So thanks for that, Austin. I feel like I'm at home. Um, anyway, for the past few months, um, I've had the chance to work closely with our awesome core FBM dev team and with our Filtastic ecosystem dev teams on the FBM. Um, and that's what I want to share with you today, what we've been working on uh, on FBM, on the Filecoin virtual machine. Um, so currently, we all know the Filecoin network as a storage and retrieval-centric network uh, for storing our valuable data. And we were just listening to a talk uh, that wanted to store physics data, which is super cool. Uh, we've got 16 exabytes of capacity at the moment and thousands of awesome storage providers across the globe, some of whom are probably at least in this building. Um, so we can think of this storage and retrieval functionality, though, as being Filecoin's layer zero architecture. Uh, and even with just this, we've achieved a lot, and many products have been built off this network already, too, and we've heard some talks for some of them. Um, but storage is really only the start for Filecoin. We want to be able to do things with the data in our network, and this is the goal of the Filecoin virtual machine. So FBM is aiming to bring smart contract programmability to the Filecoin storage network and to enable users to deploy their own smart contracts, or actors as we term them in the Filecoin ecosystem, on Filecoin. So this really introduces the ability to perform on-chain computation or computation over state. Uh, so we can think of this as bringing layer one capabilities to the Filecoin stack. Um, and that's a pretty exciting achievement. Um, and once you have this storage, the layer zero, and then you add on-chain computation, this FBM layer one, then you're enabling many, many downstream use cases and applications to emerge, uh, and even uh, off-chain computation as well, which would be known as the layer two. Um, so before I get to some of these awesome use cases that we're kind of envisioning, I want to quickly dive into the technicals that are behind FBM and how we're making this happen. Uh, so user-defined smart contracts have always been part of the Filecoin development time uh, roadmap. Sorry, um, The priority, though, was obviously to first develop this layer zero, this robust, secure, permissionless, decentralized storage network that is the Filecoin ecosystem today. Um, so this is a map um, of the technical decisions made by the core team. And by the way, all of this is open and on the GitHub. You can go through and read issues uh, and see why these decisions were made as well. Uh, but when architecturing the FBM, the team were really inspired by the virtual machine hypervisor model. Uh, and any of you that have dealt with cloud before have probably seen this model. Um, but for its ability to host multiple virtual runtimes over a common base layer. Um, and you know, for those of you who've done anything in cloud, you know what that is. Um, the team were also inspired by the Erlang uh, OTP actor model uh, and the self-healing mechanisms in that one, as well as like its location transparency and the concurrency programming paradigm of the messaging model there. Um, so both of these models have influenced a long-term vision on how programming on blockchains will look in the future to the uh, Filecoin team. Uh, so the current implementation of the FBM is based on WASM, which is a low-level assembly-like language. Uh, with a, and I haven't like, done any assembly language since college, quite, quite frankly. But anyway, so it's a low-level assembly-like language with a compact binary format, uh, and it runs with near-native performance. Uh, so many different languages can be put, compiled down to WebAssembly, and it's become really popular on the blockchain uh, space because WASM bytecode doesn't require further compilation or transpilation to be executable. Uh, so it's really suitable for like secure content addressable code. Um, so the, ref the reference uh, SDK uh, for the FBM is actually built on Rust. And this decision was made because Rust ships with a really minimal runtime. So that means the size of the package that needs to be included uh, in the WebAssembly binary stays really small and performant. So with the help of the Filecoin community, we're also uh, working on supporting EVM and Solidity compatibility out of the box for FBM as well. So that is uh, a super high priority on our roadmap. We know it's super important to devs, and we, meet, we want to meet developers where they are in the ecosystem as well and, and where they uh, can you know, contribute to our ecosystem too. Uh, and there's a massive useful tooling out there that's been built up around EVM too. So we're making it EVM compatible. 
Uh, if you do want to dig deeper into the more implementation details on the FVM, please like go and have a look at the GitHub. That ref.fvm uh, lists everything to do with it and uh, can go super into depth on how it works. Um, so what is all this tech enabling and why are we so excited about it? Well, as I mentioned a little earlier, there are boundless opportunities for innovation that layer one programmability will unleash for Filecoin. And we know the Filecoin community is super creative, uh, so I have no doubt there will be no shortage of ideas hitting mainnet once FVM does ship later this year. Um, so this mind map above uh, kind of illustrates some of the powerful use cases that the FVM can enable. Uh, and we're personally, like, fantastically excited about. So these are things like data DAOs, the Dataverse, and tokenized data sets. Uh, NFTs being minted, um, exchanged, and stored under a single, like, architecture, under a single roof. Uh, replication workers. So imagine anyone's able to write a smart contract that makes uh, new deals to maintain, like, a specific level of replication in the network. Uh, trustless reputation systems storage bounties and auction mechanisms, uh, futures and derivatives on storage that they can, they can compose in a DeFi-like fashion, uh, conditional loans for sector pledging, time-locked retrieval or event-locked retrieval even, uh, perpetual storage. Um, and if you think about it, use cases like these are, are kind of hard, if not impossible, to build on kind of the centralized and cloud storage systems we have today. So this is where Filecoin with the FBM is really going to shine. And I notice I'm kind of like getting a bit close to time, so I'll try and speed this up a little bit. Uh, but the first big use case I really want to talk about is uh, the Dataverse and data DAOs. So imagine kickstarting the data set economy by tokenizing data sets, like the physics one we were hearing about before. You could then capture and represent the value of those data sets to society. So imagine if those tokens could be harvested and exchanged between peers. You could uh, request computation services to be performed on that data, things like validation, transformations, uh, feature detection and extraction, and then like machine learning, uh, analysis, uh, joins of data, and like heaps more. So when you chain all these processes together, you'll end up compounding and augmenting the value of these data sets uh, in, in an iterative manner and like bringing business intelligence and value to them. And so on top of this, you could then deploy self-governing entities on chain to steward and curate these data sets. And for data that is really valuable to humanity, these might even uh, be crowdfunded models. So you can see why we're excited about FVM just in this one use case. Um, so as I kind of briefly mentioned, there's also replication workers. Uh, and this is exciting because with the FVM, you could write actors, uh, which the smart contracts, that ensure replication of data or other, other um, items across the network an n number of times. So this creates like a user-defined policy for your data. You could uh, you enable specifications of things like region, location, latency, and even price. And all of this automation can be inbuilt right into your smart contract. So this enables new use cases and also solves the current uh, pain point where if you want to make deals with the network, you have to transport that data to all the different uh, nodes that you want to store it on. So instead, this data transfer process can be offloaded to a trustless actor to provide as a service. And this kind of reminds me of the, catch, uh, the DevOps catchphrase of everything as code happening right here in a smart contract on FVM. Um, so the other one is L2 commitment. So the FVM can also help provide consensus-backed commitment and provability, uh, provability uh, facilities for L2 solutions like bridges. So there's, there's already uh, people building bridges for our network, such as Textile, who have built uh, out bridges to NIA, uh, to Polygon and the Ethereum network, uh, and, and Hedera, and many more. Um, but they, at some point, are going to need uh, a layer one to serve as a prerequisite um, or to plumb that network. Um, and kudos to them for building it out without even having that layer one. But these kind of layer two mechanisms will eventually need to commit to layer one. Um, and that's why FBM will accelerate innovation and value creation in the Filecoin ecosystem even more by bridging to other networks. So another use case we're excited about is adding richer functionality to storage markets, like auto-renewing of deals, of course. Ability to renew deals without repeating data transfers, self-repairing deals. So when a sector fails to prove, providers could fetch a copy of the original data deal from another provider and then potentially 
you know, with mediation of that re uh, replication worker and restore that uh, sector and data. So retrying deals as well. Clients dispatch their deal data to a depot and maybe pay a small fee to the depot to ensure satisfactory delivery to that provider. Um, time locked retrieval, uh, adding on to that as well. So making storage deals with data that cannot be retrieved by anyone until a specific window of time has elapsed or potentially a specific event has been triggered on chain. Uh, trustless reputation systems are also enabled with layer one. So with so many providers on the Filecoin network, as a user, it's really hard to uh, know which one to pick, which one has a good quality of service, which one has uh, pre great performance, latency, is in a specific region. And I know there's tools uh, and uh, solutions out there in the ecosystem already, but imagine being able to build an overlay network of nodes, um, patrolling the network, performing random deals with providers and then recording their observations on chain or on the blockchain. So that these kind of reputation scores are then traceable all the way through the deals that originated them. And they're also disputable if there's any disagreement. So the last uh, use case I'll talk about is uh, decentralized verifiable computation. So once you start adding computation onto the Filecoin blockchain, uh, you have both computation and storage under the same roof. And so this is gonna really be one of the big strengths and differentiators for the Filecoin network in the future too. Uh, you'll be able to define computation to be applied to that data, incentivize its execution with those data versus and data DAOs, and be able to certify that the result and output is verifiably con correct. Um, so linking all that, uh, we're, we're really pushing kind of uh, computation to the edges and to providers that have that data, and including an incentivization and provability circuit into the network to verify those results. Uh, so onto the section you've probably been looking for, when can we start building on this? And I'm sorry, I'm a little over time, so I'll just rush through this. There's a roadmap up on the website, fbm.filecoin.io, you can look for. We've recently shipped and audited uh, Milestone 1, so the core team and the ecosystem is busy scoping out uh, Milestone 2 now, which is the programmability part on both native Filecoin and EVM-compatible Filecoin. Um, if you do want to get involved, you can check out our fifth discussions on GitHub, um, go to the FBM project repo, or join our Slack channel and join the slash uh, uh, hashtag FBM channel on there to get involved. Uh, and finally, we have open grants involved, uh, available as well and an early builders program with, that we're running at the moment. We're really keen to hear community feedback uh, and we want your involvement to help with this. So if, if any of this is of interest to you, if you're a team that likes to get your hands really on board to you know this new Web3 technology, uh, let me know and um, we can find, find the right place for you to be involved as well. And lastly, uh, you can kind of try out some simple actors. A community member has built out this actor playground. Uh, Jim Pick, his name is, and he's built out this really cool actor playground. So you can have a play around with how some of the actors or smart contracts on the Filecoin virtual machine work. So thank you all. Hope you're excited about the future of Filecoin like me. And I uh, appreciate your attention today. <laughs>